This video will demonstrate how to use character LCD and color TFT displays on the NRF52840 with CircuitPython. Also explore the display I.O. library and use Bluetooth Low Energy to interact with the displays from a mobile phone. My tutorials are fast paced, but I always post detailed notes and code on my website. There'll be a link in the video description, along with links to my previous two CircuitPython tutorials, which I recommend if you're just getting started. Here's a 16x2 character LCD display. It's very legible, easy to connect, and great for providing user feedback. They come in different sizes and colors, they're inexpensive, and can be readily salvaged from old electronic equipment such as phones, printers, faxes, etc. For the first demo, a character LCD display will be connected to a Nordic NRF52840 dongle. The interface uses 4-bit mode, which requires 6 GPIO pins. Two potentiometers will control contrast and brightness. The LCD ground pin is connected to a ground on the dongle. The read-write pin, RW, is grounded to ensure write only. The 3.3 volt dongle could potentially be damaged if you try to read a 5 volt display. The backlight cathode is grounded, and one terminal from each pod is grounded. The display VCC is connected to VBUS, which is the USB 5 volt bus. The other terminals from each pod are also connected to 5 volts. This causes the pods to act as variable voltage dividers between 0 and 5 volts. The wiper from the first pod is connected to the LCD display contrast pin. The wiper from the other pod is connected to the backlight anode, which will control brightness. The RS pin is connected to GPIO 0.13, enable is connected to 0.15, data lines D4, D5, D6, and D7 are connected to bank 0 GPIO 17, 20, 22, and 24, respectively. And by the way, it doesn't really matter which GPIO pins you use for the display control and data lines because any available pins can be specified in the code. On a breadboard, I've already inserted a Nordic NRF52840 dongle, a 16x2 LCD display, and a dual dip potentiometer. One terminal from each pod is connected to a 5 volt rail. The other two terminals are connected to a ground rail. The wiper for the left pod is connected to the LCD display's contrast pin. The other pod wiper is connected to the backlight anode. The cathode is grounded. The display's ground pin is grounded. VCC is connected to 5 volts. Read write is grounded. The dongle ground pin is connected to a ground rail. And B bus is connected to the 5 volt rail. The display's RS pin is connected to GPIO 0.13. The enable pin is connected to 0 0.15, D4 is connected to 17, D5 to 20, D6 to 22, D7 to 24. Okay, the wiring's ready. Next, the dongle is plugged into a USB port on the Raspberry Pi. This provides 5 volt power, serial communication, and the dongle's flash storage will show up as a USB drive. On a Raspberry Pi running the latest updated version of Raspbian, double click to run the MUIDE. This dongle was used in my last tutorial and still contains all the code. But I want to start with a clean slate. Click Serial to open the Serial Console. Press any key to enter the REPL. I'm currently running CircuitPython Beta 4, dated March 27, 2019. Import Storage. Then Storage Erase File System. This will wipe all files from the dongle, but leave the CircuitPython firmware intact. This is also handy if your board is crashing. If the board is locked, you can do a slow double tap of the reset button to enter the REPL in safe mode, and then use Erase File System to wipe it. Just make sure you back up frequently because all your code will be erased. Off camera, I downloaded the latest version of the CircuitPython bundle. Adafruit provides a character LCD library. Copy the folder, navigate to the Nordic dongle which shows up as a USB drive, paste the folder to the dongle. In Mu, increase the font size and clear the comment. Import board for the board definitions. From digital IO, import digital in out, which will be used to declare the GPIO pins. From time, import sleep and from the Adafruit Character LCD library, which we just copied from the bundle, import Character LCD Mono. The GPIO pins are defined for the display's command and data lines. RS is 0 0.13, enable is 15, D4 is 17, D5 is 20, D6 is 22, and D7 is 24. The display has 16 columns and two rows. An LCD display is instantiated and passed the parameters for the GPIO pins and the size. The LCD display is cleared. The message property is given some sample text. This will show the message on the display. The slash n designates a line break. The program sleeps for 4 seconds, then a 16 count loop is used to shift the message off the right side of the display with a small pause for each step. Click check to verify the code, and no problems. Click save. The default location is the dongle. The program is called code.py, which causes it to run automatically. Save, and the program's running. Back on the breadboard, the message is displayed, and a few seconds later, the message slides to the right and the program ends. Next, we'll make the display more interactive using Bluetooth. Just a few modifications to the existing code. Sleep won't be needed. 
from Adafruit BLE UART, UART server is imported. The wiring doesn't change, nor does the display settings. Lose everything after the display is instantiated. Clear the display and post a message that the BLE server is waiting for connection, which is achieved by defining a UART server and calling start advertising. It would have been better to practice to put the waiting message after advertising, but it still works. A while loop waits for a Bluetooth device to connect. Upon connection, the display is cleared and updated to listening for messages. Another while loop runs as long as the Bluetooth device stays connected. UART in waiting checks for incoming data. If so, UART read returns the message. Decode converts the binary data to text. Our strip cleans up any trailing white space. The display is cleared and the incoming message is displayed to the LCD. Finally, UART write transmits an acknowledgement back to the Bluetooth client. Click to check the code and no problems. Click save and there's a problem. Check doesn't always catch all the errors. Open the serial console and use Ctrl D to reload. Okay, I forgot to copy over the Adafruit BLE library from the bundle. I'll go to the folder where I downloaded the CircuitPython bundle. Copy Adafruit BLE, go to the dongle, and paste. Now it works. The display shows waiting for connection. If your display doesn't work, one of the first troubleshooting steps is to adjust the contrast and brightness pots. Too little contrast and the display will be blank. Too much contrast and nothing but blocks of pixels. Too little brightness will cause nearly a blank display. Okay, that looks good on the camera. The Adafruit Bluefruit LE Connect app, which I demonstrated in my last video, will afford remote control from a phone. Pressing Connect connects to the NRF52840 dongle. The LCD display updates and is awaiting messages. Tapping UART opens a terminal on the phone. I'll type Hello World and tap Send. The LCD display shows Hello World and the terminal receives the message displayed acknowledgement. Next, we'll take a look at a color graphic LCD display. In my previous MicroPython OLED tutorial, I created a MicroPython library for the SSD1351 display and a simple brick game. I updated my library so it's now CircuitPython compatible. I've also included a couple CircuitPython examples. You can download the SSD1351 library and all the demos on my GitHub page. Here's a simple maze demo. Instead of a wired slider, the main character is controlled wirelessly using the control pad that's included in the Adafruit Bluefruit LE Connect app. I designed the library to be performant, but it's all coded in MicroPython. If I were to add a lot of monsters, weapons, and other props, the animation might not be so fluid, and it would take a lot of code. Fortunately, CircuitPython provides a native LCD library called Display.io, which has many great features, such as tile sets, which can be used for sprites and bitmap fonts. There are groups which can organize different layers of graphics. Layers can have transparent backgrounds so they can be stacked on top of other layers. Display.io is currently very beta. It's a work in progress and the code's in flux. Therefore, some syntax will likely change by the time you watch this video. There's also a lot of features that haven't been implemented yet. For example, there's currently no support for the SSD1351 display. However, the Display.io library is being very actively developed, so I'd expect support very soon. Instead, I'll use an ST7735, which is supported by Display.io. It's an inexpensive 16-bit color TFT graphic LCD display. It comes in different sizes and resolutions. This one's 1.8 inch, 128 by 160 pixels. There's a fast spy interface which makes it easy to connect to most IoT devices. It operates at 3.3 volts, so it's compatible with the NRF52840. For the next demo, I'll switch to an Adafruit Feather NRF52840 Express board because I encountered hardware crashing using the Nordic dongle. Using the Display I.O. library, the Spy library, the Bluetooth library, and the DHT library probably was too much for the dongle, which has less memory than the Feather. The ST7735 ground is connected to a ground on the Feather. VCC is connected to 3.3 volts. RST, or Reset, is connected to GPIO 9. AO, which toggles between data and command mode, is connected to GPIO 10. SDA is connected to MO, which stands for MOSI, Master Out, Slave In. SCL is connected to SCK, Serial Clock. CS, Chip Select, is connected to GPIO 11. The backlight LED anode is connected to 3.3 volts. The backlight cathode is connected to ground. A DHT22 sensor will also be connected to provide temperature and humidity data. The DHT22 ground pin is grounded. The DHT22 VCC pin is connected to 3.3 volts. The data pin is connected to GPIO 5. A 10K pull-up resistor is placed between the data line and 3.3 volts. As with the character LCD display wiring, you can use different GPIO pins, although I'd stick with the dedicated MOSI and serial clock pins if your board has them because it'll make coding easier. On another breadboard is a Feather NRF52840 Express. 
The 3.3 volt pin is connected to a 3.3 volt rail. The ground is connected to a ground rail. Also plugged in is an ST7735 LCD display. Its ground pin is grounded, and VCC is connected to 3.3 volts. The LED backlight anode is connected to 3.3 volts, and the cathode is grounded. A DHT22 temperature humidity sensor is plugged into the board and aligned with the existing red and black jumpers to provide 3.3 volts in ground. The DHT22 data line is connected to GPIO5. A 10K ohm pull-up resistor is placed across the data line and 3.3 volts. Reset is connected to GPIO9. AO is connected to GPIO10. SDA is connected to MO. SCL is connected to SCK. CS is connected to GPIO11. Okay, the hardware is good. Now for the software. There's actually several versions of the ST7735 LC display. I have the ST7735R. Adafruit does provide an ST7735 display I.O. driver, but as of this video, it doesn't work with my display. Fortunately, there's a fork by Maker Melissa that does work, and I'd like to say thanks because she provided a lot of useful information in addition to the driver. One of the reasons I really like CircuitPython is because it has a great community with very helpful and friendly developers. I'll switch to her fork and click clone and copy the address to the clipboard. Close the browser, open a blank terminal, cd to the downloads folder, type git clone, and paste in the link to the ST7735 fork. Okay, the library's been downloaded. Close the terminal, open the file manager, go to the downloads folder, open the Adafruit CircuitPython ST7735 folder, and the Adafruit ST7735 subfolder, right-click ST7735R.py, and select copy. Switch to the CircuitPython folder on the feather, and paste. A couple more libraries from the bundle are needed. Select Adafruit BLE and Adafruit DHT. Right-click copy. Switch back to the feather, and paste. The demo uses a background bitmap, which I already have in the Pi's picture folder. Copy the bitmap, go back to the feather, and paste. Okay, that takes care of all the files. Back in Mu, I'll paste in some boilerplate code that's required to get started with the Display I.O. library. I copied it from the example. Import board, import Display I.O., import the ST7735R library, the SPI bus is set to the board's default clock and data lines, CS and DC are set to GPIO 11 and 10 respectively, Display I.O. release displays needs to be called to ensure that all display resources are released so that they can be reused. The display bus is instantiated using display I.O. for wire, and is passed SPI, chip select, DC, and reset. This code would be more consistent if reset had been separately defined, like CS and DC. Next, an ST7735R display is instantiated on the bus, and the width and height are passed. By the way, there are CircuitPython boards that have built-in displays. They don't require the above boilerplate code. The displays can be driven simply by referencing board.display. One very cool feature of the Display.io library is that when your code isn't running, it'll automatically pipe the serial console to the display. Therefore, even though this program doesn't have any drawing commands, text, or bitmaps yet, it's still enough to test if the display works. First, a quick check for bugs. No problems. Open the serial console, click Save, call it code.py, and save. Well, it's mostly working. The serial output matches the serial output on the Raspberry Pi. The display is upside down and the colors are wrong. Looks like blue and red are swapped. However, these issues are easily fixed in code. Close the serial window and click load to open the ST7735R library. Scroll down to the init sequence, which is an array of commands that initializes the display at startup. The hex 20 command turns off color inversion, which sets the color order to red, green, blue. Since the display is currently showing up as blue, green, red, it's necessary to change the hex command 20 to 21, which sets inversion on. Basically, it just swaps the red and blue channels. To fix the upside down display, madctl, which is hex command 36, needs to be modified. This is the memory data access control. It allows you to change the order and direction that the display's row and column memory is accessed. Changing the data byte from 18 to C8 will vertically flip the display. All these commands are documented in the ST7735 datasheet. Okay, that should do it. Turn the serial console back on and click Save. The program automatically reloads and the display is now the correct orientation and color. Pressing spacebar enters the REPL. As I type print hello world, the console text is simultaneously displayed on the Pi and the LCD display. Now let's add a sensor, some graphics, and Bluetooth. Import the DHT22 temperature humidity sensor library. Import the BLE UART server library. From terminal I.O. 
font, and terminal are imported. This library supports creating a scrolling text terminal. Sleep is imported. The BLA UART server is instantiated and advertising started. The DHT22 sensor is instantiated on GPIO5. Splash defines a display I.O. group. Display show is called and passed the group. Open is used to load a background bitmap from flash storage. BMP is set to the bitmap using display on disk bitmap. A background tile grid is defined and passed the bitmap and a pixel shader which uses the display I.O. color converter method. The shader translates the color data stored in the bitmap. X and Y are set to zero. This positions the bitmap at the top left corner within the parent. Splash append adds the background image to the display group. A palette is defined using display I.O. palette. It'll have two colors. Make transparent sets the first color transparent. The second color in the palette is set to green. W and H store the tile width and height for each terminal I.O. font character, which is derived using the get bounding box method. A foreground tile grid is defined and it's past the terminal I.O. bitmap font. The pixel shader is set to the above palette. This will generate green characters on a transparent background. X is indented slightly at 2 and Y is set to 0. The width is 21 tiles and the height is 5 tiles. This creates a terminal that's 21 characters wide and 5 lines high. Tile width and height are set to the character dimensions that were derived from the font bounding box. The terminal is instantiated and pass the foreground tile grid and default terminal I.O. font. Splash append adds the foreground to the display I.O. group. Display wait for frame pauses while the frame is transmitted to the display. The main program loops an infinite while. The DHT22 library is prone to errors, so it's wrapped in a try statement. T stores the temperature returned from the DHT sensor. H stores the humidity. Is instance checks the sensor's results are valid. Temperature should be afloat and humidity should be afloat. If so, terminal write is called twice, once to show the temperature and again to show humidity write justified. If a BLE client is connected, then UART server write is used to transmit the temperature and humidity in comma delineated format via Bluetooth. The loop waits 3 seconds and repeats. The DHT22 sensor can give inaccurate results if you don't wait at least 2 seconds between calls. Else catches invalid sensor readings and accept catches any runtime errors. Click check. No problems. Click serial and click save. The display shows a Saturn V rocket in the background and the temperature and humidity readings in the green terminal font. The text scrolls up automatically as new data arrives. Notice that the foreground layer is not overriding the background layer. The foreground could have just as easily been a character sprite and the background a game map texture. Back on the phone, I'll make a BLE connection with the Bluefruit LE Connect app. Then open the plotter, increase the chart width. I'll speed up the video and the app plots the temperature and humidity data from the DHT22 sensor. I hope you found this video interesting. You can support this channel by subscribing, leaving a like, and sharing. Thanks for watching.